there's tricks, and I figured out all the tricks to taking photos of your work. Yeah, if you shut that door, it'd be cool. Um, they're pretty simple. It's just a matter of, of doing the correct setup. So the first thing, remember the T-tape method from the mounting? That's what I do on the wall. Just pick a neutral colored wall, white, gray, or black. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then I made this um, ghetto fabulous like device for taking photos with my phone or video. I just like cut a little groove in a two by four and then screwed the tripod mount into it. So you can so even if you don't have a great camera, you can create a good setup. And then um, the lighting equipment here, this cost about 150 for both lights and uh, and the uh, um, umbrellas and bulbs and everything, right? So um, the trick to it is mostly like setting up the correct height. So what you do is you take your take your tripod, uh, move it up close, and then you put the lens at the center of the paper, right? See it? How physically it's like lined up in the center? Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're trying to eliminate distortion. Then, since you have your lens to mark with, you move over to your photo light, and you set your photo lights at the same height as your lens, right? Which is the same height as the middle of the paper. So now you're eliminating any distortions in the lighting that are possible. Make sense? So what you don't want is a raking light on it where the light goes down at an angle because that will create hot hot and cold spots in the in the photo. Okay. Now there are two well basically the first step in doing lighting is that you want a, as much um, darkness as possible. Right? So you want as little light on the surface of this as you can get it. And then when you turn the photo lights on, these are each 500 watts. So there are two ways you can do it, and it just depends on how, on the lighting situation and what you're trying to photograph. So what I like to do is I like to um, point the lights away at the, at the umbrella and let it bounce backwards. And you try for basically 45 degrees, roughly, from each side. And you try to get it even. Okay. Then the photographer's trick is like um, another one is called a gray card, which is like literally actually a gray card. And we I have I don't have an actual gray card with me. Um, but basically, what it does is you hold it up and you see if there's any hot spots in the lighting, like if there's too much um, light in one spot, and then you just readjust. You know, you might have to turn a light this way or that way, whatever. If you're not getting, if you take a photo and you don't get enough wattage on there, you just, you do a through shoot. Make sense? So you turn it around and uh, you shoot through the, uh, through the umbrella. Okay, so for a while I didn't use umbrellas and I got all these like super hot spots and, and shiny bits on there and it didn't really work out. So, next what you do um, is uh, if, you, if you have a nice camera, that's great and would be preferable. But what you want to do is get close, as close as possible without creating too much lens distortion. And you want to line up the lens to the center of the piece as best you can, right? And then you want to very lightly touch and take a photo. Right, and uh, then you'll like if I were using the good camera, I'd have it hooked up to the laptop, and I'd be able to see exactly how good the exposure was. Right, and then if it's not bright enough, you know, I could do this. Take it. You take the lighting even closer, right? And it's still soft enough. So the problem with actually physically touching the camera is that it shakes it just a little bit, um, which is not desirable. So um, 
with a decent camera, what you do is you get um, a digital cable release, and you plug it into the camera, and you can actually like take a picture by clicking like that. Anywho, so here with a good camera, I'll put the cable release in. <coughs> So I get the display set up. Um, get it kind of focused. And then I can just kind of get a shot, right? I always like to take at least one auto shot just to see what the camera does on its own. Sometimes it will default to nice automatic settings. The other thing too with this is you can adjust where it focuses on, which is kind of nice for sculptures. Um, so here. You can see that as I click here, the exposure time changes. I get a little preview of how dark it will be. So what I do is I go, boom, something that I know is too dark, lighter, wait for it to stop shaking, lighter, and then go till it's overexposed. Right? So that is that is one bracket. If I take this light, and move it two feet, and then I have to do the whole bracket again. And when you get on a roll, what you do is you just leave the camera here, switch out a new piece, keep the lighting where it is, and just like throw your brackets, click, 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 and you do a whole bunch all at once. That's the first step. We'll go over the second step. I'll show you, I'll, once I get all these like off the camera, I'll show you, show you how to edit them in Photoshop. It's pretty easy. Sound good? Questions?